So can you briefly describe the evidence to support myofascial release? Okay. Um, me start? Yeah. You start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there, okay, so um, I, uh, briefly, there's a, there's a fair amount of evidence for myofascial release. Um, that's not just head-to-toe type evidence, but evidence for voice, swallow, globus, TMJ disorders, respiratory disorders. Um, the, the lack of evidence isn't a problem. It's what the evidence says and doesn't say that I see is a bit more of a problem. Um, some people don't see it that way because there's a lot of evidence that says that malfascial for, release, for instance, can be helpful for muscle tension and dysphonia or uh, radiation-induced fibrosis, right? Um, but what the study is really saying is when somebody puts their hands on a person and does what's called mouthwash release in all the different versions, that it's helpful for that disorder. Uh, but what the evidence doesn't really show is what's happening, right? What's happening under the skin, which is all the different stories from myofascial release, whether it's the rolfing version, the stucks, the tissue manipulation version, the, the kind of version that I learned, the slower, gentler version, they all have different stories of what's affected under the skin, but none of the research really proves that or disproves that for that matter. And everybody just say, oh yeah, it's the fascia releasing or the fascia is restricted. Um, but the evidence doesn't show that. The evidence says that when you touch somebody, in, in a thing called myofascial release, it's often helpful, which is good because that's what we're doing for a living. Mm -hmm. um, my big thing over the last five or ten years is really to kind of separate that out. You know, yes, the work is helpful, but what's really occurring? Is it really the way we were taught it? Um, and so you look at it from less of what the fascia is is doing or mm -hmm. not doing, mm -hmm. but actually what you, the therapist, are doing with the patient or, or the client and the relationship of the touch. Exactly, exactly. Right, yeah. And then we're going off on wonderful tangents already, I can tell this is really good, because if I stood across the room from 10 different therapists doing 10 different modalities, and um, you know, it kind of blurred my eyes a little bit, I wouldn't know which one is which. Right, right? because osteopaths do visceral, yeah. fascial manipulation, sure. or whatever you want to call it, and chiros, and... Somebody might be doing lymphatic drainage in a real light, gentle way. It might be sequential, right? But the, the, the style of touch, at least from a distance, may really resemble what I do from a fascial mm. release or what somebody who says they do craniosacral therapy is doing, right? Touch is touch, and but yet we have all these stories that seem to explain the touch as somehow unique and different from another person, but to that neutral observer, you know, we're really kind of doing the same thing. It's more the story behind it mm. and the story that we sell the patient, the story we're sold on when we take the training, mm. Um, they're all rabbit holes. I love the concept of the rabbit hole, and I, we're going to talk about it a lot tonight because I was trained deep down at the bottom of an MFR rabbit hole, <laughs> and it took me a long time to get my head out of that hole to look around and see what other people are doing. And, you know, Stephen, I'm guessing you might call what you do myofascial release, but if I watched you, it may not completely resemble what I do, but, you know, it's some of the brand identity issue. Yeah, and, and I suppose like, uh, okay, so let's take the, the, the infamous cross-hand stretch, yeah, yeah. right, you know, that that is the, for anybody who doesn't know, yeah. <laughs> it's that, it's applying uh, a gentle stretch and the idea, perhaps in some narratives of myofascial release, is that when you put your hands on somebody and put the, the tissues on a stretch, that that bit of fascia is somehow releasing or changing or moving. That's the story. That's that's the narrative that's taught. Yeah. And how can how can we measure that? And how how can we know? Yeah. So, it seems more plausible that when you put your hands on somebody, we look at just touching them, and that that is what we know. Yeah. But is it enough? Right. I mean, it's not enough for a lot of people. It's not mm -hmm. enough for a lot of therapists or referral sources or even the patients. They want to know well, what's happening, what's wrong with me, right? Um, just saying we're touching you in a contextually appropriate way um, to help you through this, well, that usually doesn't cut it for a lot of people. But, you know... The, right, so then we go and get into placebo territory. You placebo, context, indirect... Yeah, absolutely, right? Yeah. Um, I, the ironic part... I just wrote a post about this the other day on Facebook about that concept of the classic cross-handed stretch, which was said to... when you, This is how I was taught it, right? And this is what was contained in that great medical resource on the internet, Wikipedia, was when you put your hands on somebody and, and you stretch them and you, you engage the fashion, then 
they've got you. If you if you buy that statement that when you take hold of a person and engage the fascia, right? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see the problem with that yeah, statement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the only thing I can be certain of is I'm engaging their skin, right? And fascia's under there, but so is a lot of other stuff, right? How can I know that that's a fascia restriction that stops me? It could be, mm -hmm. but it could be other tissue. It could be neurological patterns. It could be fear. It could be it could be a lot of things. But you know, you had me at fascia is sort of the, the the hook that I was trained under. So when you're palpating the hyaluronic region, for yeah, example, yeah. <clears throat> you could be palpating all manner of things. So we could be looking at crossing over some SCMs. We mm -hmm. could look at but 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 what. Uh, the 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 narrative that, that you were taught was that you're actually just affecting the fascia. Yeah. Oh, every everything else is less important. It's the fascia restriction, right? And even if if you say to me, "Well, I'm going to take hold of your hyoid," I I I tend to soften that statement by saying, "I'm going to grab you in the general region of the hyoid mm. because there's a whole lot of humanness between me and that hyoid." And yeah, I can I can feel like I'm grabbing the outlines, and, and yeah, yeah, I yeah. certainly am, but there's muscle, right? There's there's skin, there's fascia, there's nerves, there's blood vessels, there's lymph, right? There's a lot of tissue, per se, but there's a lot of living anatomy and psychological awareness, biopsychosocial. You know, when you touch somebody, you're not just touching a bone, and you can't touch a bone unless you cut them open and grab hold of no, them directly, no, of right? But yet we speak in those terms, I'm going to treat your diaphragm yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I'm going to treat your hyoid now, I'm going to treat the thyroid cartilage now. Like somehow they exist in isolation that we can reach in there and affect them singularly. And I just don't see it that way. So, uh, but a lot of people do.